So once again, the language of syncretism. And I want you to listen to this um, clearly so that um, you can um, hear what is being said. Um, and, I, and I want, I, I'm not going to respond to this video. You're going to respond to the video. One of you are going to pick this up and, and I want to have a conversation about what you hear because this is going to be a test to see if, you know, the last couple of weeks have been of value. I want us to really analyze what is being said. It's a short clip, but based on all we've talked about, what do you hear when you hear this? And we've got a lot of people. You have to understand today in the world, whether you're talking about elected officials or clergy or anything else, anybody who wants to be something can jump up and be it. But just because you call yourself a duck doesn't make you quack. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it really takes more work to be proficient than what most people realize. And that preparation, that process is critical. And by the way, the more prepared you are, the less nervous you are, the more confidence you have, the more prepared you are to deal. So I talk about studying the text or the information that you're about to deliver, but I also talk about studying the crowd because it's not enough to know who you are. You need to know who you're talking to. If I'm talking in, in, in the breakfast club, there's a different vernacular that I would use than I, if I were talking on TBN because it's a different audience. It's a different demographic. It's a different terminology. And so those terms might not fit this opportunity. If I get on the Bloomberg report, I have to talk in a different language than I'm talking now because it's a business. And and I'm trying to get us to diversify so that we can get out of, of the gravitational pull of our history and escalate toward our destiny. You 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 don't you don't you don't dress like you're diversifying. You you, you dress like you're about to perform every time we see you, Bishop, no matter where you at. I knew you was gonna say something about what I had on. First of all, <laughs> First of all, I, you cannot be impressed today with this jogging suit and my equality shirt on. That's Sean okay. John, though. You fly. But I you watch got the Sean John on. You fly. I watch you every Sunday. And Bishop. I fly. Okay. Y'all have to teach me what's fly. Sometimes I get it wrong. And, <laughs> and, and here's the funny part I, I'm barefoot. Oh. <laughs> you barefoot. So. Let's discuss. Who will be the first? What did they hear? Did they, if you didn't hear anything out, you didn't hear anything, you know, that was worth talking about, then fine. Let me know also. But if you heard something that is worth speaking about, please, who will be the first? Um, it's Catherine. He didn't say anything about relying upon the Lord. It was just all about your knowledge and what you know and um, yeah, so it's all just it's only about study. That's all you need to do in studying the audience. Yeah, that's very true. It was all knowledge based uh, advice. There's no, re no reliance on the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah, none at all. And I would expect um, from someone of his staff for him to take the opportunity to inject, you know reliance on on god but you know as he as you have seen he's come up a lot in this study i promise i am not targeting him he just seems to be <laughs> at the center of all of this stuff anybody else based on what they just heard hi everyone um Hello. he said um yeah the more prepared you are the more confident you are so i agree with what sister catherine said but do we really think that he's going to start talking about Jesus Christ in the breakfast club? He's not. Um, he said, study the crowd. Now, one, you can take it in a wrong way, whereas obviously with Paul, he said, you know, when he was talking to a different crowd, there's certain things that he would say. Um, or when he went to Mars Hill, there's a certain way that he spoke to them. But he's, well, talking, he's talking about it slightly differently study the crowd, know what moves them, know what words. So mm. yeah, go on there, put an equality shirt, whatever that means, 
start talking in riddles and start saying things that don't really make sense, start talking about energy and all of that stuff without actually using God in it so that you don't offend people. So he knows the crowd that he's in and he's just using it to his advantage. Exactly right. That's exactly right. It is, it is, and, and like you said, part of what he says is true. You do need to know your audience because, you know, I always talk about Paul going to Mars Hill and addressing the um, Epicureans and the Stoics, speaking of their own philosophy, but he did that to bring it right back to the story of the, or the, 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 the preaching of the gospel. But what, what we heard here was a motivational business lesson in how to uh, win over the your audience right and but the, the preacher of the gospel cannot be cannot operate like that and i'll give you that example i know that to get a lot of views on yam all i have to do is make a certain type of video because a certain type of video gets a certain audience and if you see it with a lot of christian youtubers they will put out certain types of videos. Once they know they get a certain amount of clicks and views, they will make videos based on that. I made a decision from the beginning that we're not going to make videos for views because if we start to make videos to get views, then actually we could we could die we could divert from what God has called us to do. So whether the video gets one view or fifty views, we're going to preach the gospel and we're going to do what God told us to do and we're going to say what God told us to say. However, you will see that if you want a larger audience, certain compromises have to be made. Now, it goes back to the, this, the topic of this is the language of syncretism. In today's um, uh, vernacular, as he talks about, what does equality and diversity mean? Hi. Um, okay. I think that it, 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 it even it shows us how even the little things that people do shows us what camp they belong in, they belong. Because at the moment, I think his equality t-shirt is referring to the bill that's going through um, the, the, the Congress in America, um, the, 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 the the Biden administration is trying to pass this bill called, called the Equality Act. And now a lot of churches actually are up in arms and said, well, really it's not an Equality Act. If this bill is actually passed, it's essentially trying to muzzle the church. So it's, it's very, um, <coughs> sorry, it's very, um anti the gospel and it's more pro lgbt rights so if you go through like there's there's been loads and loads of chatter um on um youtube most of the the top youtubers they've been doing um videos about this act and um this bill and they've been dissecting it and going into the different parts of the bill etc so the T-shirt that he's wearing, that's, that, that's what he's referring to. But the thing is, I'm saying that for somebody in his position, and I know that um, in his secular life that he's a motivational speaker, etc. but the thing is that he is seen as a bishop, a preacher of the gospel wherever he goes. So whatever he does, it's going to speak volumes. And it's the same reason why David, when he had the opportunity to kill Saul, he didn't. It wasn't because he respected Saul, but he respected the office that Saul held. And now he holds a very high office and he is he's very influential and wherever people go, whatever he does, people see him as a minister of the gospel. So it, it's, it's very important and it's irresponsible of him to be pushing a certain agenda because there's people, you know, the Bible says, woe unto him who leads my, 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 my sheep astray. So he has a very, he, he has a big responsibility. So I think that we need to be mindful of these things. 
and mindful of the different offices that we hold and the influence that we could have on people. So I think that, you know, that he, he needs to be mindful of that. And that's what I got from that anyway. I just, I was like, is he really? So pe everywhere he goes at first, people ask him, well, what do you think of the LGBT, blah, blah, blah. He's actually saying what he believes without saying it. It's double speak. And what you heard from him there, where he talked about speaking differently on different platforms, shows you that he is acutely aware of what he is doing. He is not unaware. Because remember, I showed you a video a few weeks ago of him um, selling another book on um, Steve Harvey's platform. And he was talking about the answer being inside of you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, using more syncretic, syncretic language which shows you the side he has chosen. And equality and diversity, if anybody's in the workplace, all that is a code word for is LGBT inclusion. And there's another more sinister side to this because the whole equality uh, idea and dive at work, let's sort of work, and the diversity part, the diversity part is more of the LGBT inclusion and they, they throw on the black agenda on top of that as well. This is why you have to be careful about you know subscribing to BLM and all this kind of nonsense because all of these things come with the LGBT on the back. So it's like, okay, black people are getting more rights or whatever, but actually to, to get those rights, you have to jump on the same train as the LGBTQ. This is why we need to support the kingdom and the kingdom's agenda and not the world's agenda. But back to equality and diversity. There's another side to this equality and diversity thing. Other than the LGBT thing, it's the feminist side or the, the, the idea of men and women being the same because equality means sameness. And when we push this agenda of equality of men and women, what we don't understand is we're not pushing the, the equality of men and women in the sight of God because that, that's, a, that's a known thing, that's a standard. We know that God sees men and women as equally as valuable, but what God doesn't see is men and women having the same responsibilities. And we see that in the garden because Eve was never given the task of looking after the garden. Eve was never given the task of naming any animals. Eve was never given the task of giving Adam the word. Eve was never given the task of ruling Adam or leading Adam. The only time that that order shifted is when Eve accepted the word of Satan. Yeah, so this whole men and women equality thing, it's got nothing to do with um, men and women getting fair treatment, but it's got everything to do with pushing the agenda that you can be and do what you want to do and men and women are the same, which is a lie from the pit of hell. Because if God never gave women certain responsibilities and he never gave man certain, men certain responsibilities, then that's not changing. Because one thing we have to remember, there is nothing new under the sun. The nature of human beings has not changed. Therefore, the word of God cannot change towards human beings because our nature hasn't changed. This is why God is unchangeable. And his word is sure and his word is not um his word is not uh conditional it's absolute if it was good for, for 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 the year zero it's good for the year now because he understands the corrupt nature of human beings so 